Welcome to OM Report by Andre Alpa, your interview focused podcast on topics from online marketing to internet startups. So this time OM Report, it's with Jeff Allen. Jeff, can you please introduce yourself really quickly so people could know if you, they don't know you, they, they will learn about you. Yep. So I'm Jeff Allen, I'm with Hannapin Marketing and I write for the blog PPC Hero and we also have our own conference in, in yes. the US called HeroConf. So, so, but the, it's a, it's a, the, the blog is open. It's not just you guys writing. It's not just like a corporate blog. It's like a, you know, all different kinds of PPC guys writing about it. Yeah. So it's about, it's about 75% people who work at Hannapin who write on it. And then the rest are people from all kinds of big brands and other agencies and things like that. All right. So, so how do you come up with a, with a good blog post? I mean, you had some pretty astonishing ones. That's why actually we came up with inviting you over here to Berlin. Mm -hmm. So how do you come up with a good topic? Do you have like, I don't know, like it's sessions once a month, like a <laughs> creative moment? where you come up with topics and then try to fill them or see if they're realistic or how do you, how do, you do it? Uh, it's a little of both. So sometimes Google helps us out by rolling out something really big like enhanced campaigns that make it a pretty easy decision for us. But outside of that, I personally meet once a month and kind of figure out what I want to write about that month. Okay. and then try to break it down into a couple blog posts. Right. So if I'm going to write about ad copy, I might talk about the creative process with coming up with a new ad. And then I might talk about implementing it in a scientific way. And then I might talk about measuring the results in the third post or something like that. And then we also meet as a team and try to give each other ideas because it is hard. Every, we, we post something every day about, and so it's pretty it's hard heavy. to stay so on top of it. So do you know how much of your time you know, goes into, into writing blog posts? Is it like 10% of your time, 20 less? Um, it's probably about 10 to 20 percent yeah it takes me about four four to six hours to write one post right to write one good post <laughs> wow wow that's quite amazing so how come you're so willing to share like i i remember this one blog post about enhanced campaigns which was like really quite open you know you know stats facts the truth yep. in your face how come it's like not the the average blog post you know i think the average let's say anglo-saxon blog post is like the five things you need to take care when you write <laughs> ad right. copy right right but that was kind of not your average blog post, right? Yeah, so we, I mean, the blog obviously brings us some clients. Sure. And so, since it's a way we get a lot of our clients, it helps us attract the right clients, right? And the right good blog posts that are in depth, that are open and honest. Because part of it's we want clients that are open and honest and share information with us. So, if they come in the door knowing, hey, if we're doing cool stuff on your account, other people are going to know about it. You have to be okay with that. It's probably attracting the right people into our business and the right employees to work with and everything like right. that. So do you work a lot internationally? Do you see differences between you know PPC in different countries? How, how Very much so. what's like some remarkable things that always come up yeah. on your mind when you think about that topic? So cost per click and click through rate are usually the two biggest things. So I'll and hear people they say differ from country to country. Mm -hmm. So I'll hear people say uh, like over in Europe, man, cost per clicks are really high. They're one or two dollars for this keyword. And the U.S. that same keyword might be twenty or thirty dollars. Um, so it's a pretty big wide gap and click through rate same thing for us a good click through rate might be 3% but in a lot of European countries it's 20% and so it's really interesting I think it's it, that's the main difference is maybe the US is getting a little more competitive a little faster but do you think it still pays off if it's that competitive I mean if the, the, the you know if the gap is that big is it still does it really pay off it depends on the client or is it like a strategy that they want to gain market share and therefore overspend yeah I think I think if the clients looking for a lot of top-line revenue growth it's still good. The sure. profit margin matters a little less. If it's a well-known brand, usually it's a little bit easier to be competitive in the space and get more clicks and cheaper clicks and everything like that. Um, but there's also clients that are small and don't have high margins that it still makes a lot of sense for because the industry they're in doesn't have like a major player that can spend big money on. So they could probably like be the, the biggest. Mm -hmm. So how do you usually work together with your clients? Do you pay like a fixed fee or do you get a chunk of the revenue extra you made them or how does it or do you have like a target CP CPL or CP CPA or something like that or how does it usually work yeah so easy answer is kind of all of the above okay. so uh, it's pretty specific to the clients sometimes we'll do work on an hourly rate we'll right. say hey you only need a project done so buy a block of hours from us and we'll work on that project like coach an in-house team or something like yeah, that training right. we've done a lot of training and things like that other times it's pure percent of spend and so we just whatever the percent of spend is that we negotiate that's what it ends up being but how do you know what, what's the right medicine for the right for the for the certain specific client how do you know what's so is, is do you have a preference how you like it best or is there how do you I mean the different ways how to charge mm -hmm. how do you prioritize them for yourself yeah or is there like certain business models that like for example I don't know does e-commerce call for a certain setup or does you know I don't know dating or yeah 
like brands do they do something different yeah so, I think so what are factors that influence that how you how you work together with the clients yeah I think there's no perfect pricing model I think no matter what either you're misaligned so percent of spend the problem is you're obviously trying to drive spend where the client's trying to drive profitability but even a paper performance model like percent of revenue you don't control all the other factors that go into that so you could drive a lot of really good leads but the call center doesn't close any and you don't manage the call center so there's nothing you can do so there's kind of pros and cons to every side of it i think it really depends on the business's model uh, percent of spend works a lot in a lot of cases works well in a lot of cases because you can just pad the percent of spend into the overall spend so if your fee is 10 percent you just add that onto the total spend and then you calculate your cost per acquisition on the total cost to the client. And so a lot of times that makes it kind of the easiest, the simplest, the most streamlined. But it really does depend on the instance. Do you, do you uh, use tools that are available on the market or do you have your own tools? How, how does that work with you guys? Yeah, so we uh, use Acquisio is okay. kind of our, our platform of choice. Um, but we also have developed some of our own tools. Um, so they're actually on on the blog, on PPC Hero, you can get to the site and there's stuff for quality score and ad testing and things like that that we use internally and we're kind of defining or developing internally and releasing slowly to the rest of the people. Once our team uses them and likes them, then we release them to other people as well. Right. Pretty nice. So in the States, Bing is much more important than over here in Europe. <laughs> how much of your time, I mean, how much of your time do you spend on PPC with Bing and how much do you spend on, on AdWords? You know, what's the share in your, you know, your everyday work, depending also in correlation to the to this share like the market share that we usually you know can read about yep. how did what, what from your point of view you know do you really spend 30 percent of your time on Bing what's the supposedly yeah. the, the market share of Bing uh, no <laughs> so, uh, what, what, what does it look like do you do only AdWords or what, what does it look like in, in your yep. case so we definitely do it um, I would say probably on average in an account we spend five to ten percent of the time doing it and we probably get ten to fifteen percent lift in, in results from it all right and how much of the budget do you spend also five to ten percent or is it like just your time the budget's actually a little bit lower even, so okay. it might be five to ten, but closer to five. Okay. Um, which is kind of how we, we split our time up. So, so how come the market share is larger, but you don't focus so much on it as the supposed market share? That's. I, I, I think it's a couple things. One, they're just starting to make it easier to work with. Okay. So we're an all Mac office. They don't have a Mac version of the desktop editor. Oh my God. So we have one PC that's just kind of a lonely PC that sits on a desk and people go You're use it. You're kidding me. That's a cool story. <laughs> <laughs> so we're working on that. I know Bing's working on creating that. So that will help us spend more time in it. Absolutely. That um, I, I didn't know that. That was quite. <laughs> but it's also some of the testing we do is in Google. And once it works, we put it in Bing. So it's kind of test first and then put it in there. Because so the testing is also difficult to do even if you have your PC. Mm, a little bit, right. yeah. All right. So, but you think they're going to catch up in the next year or two, or what do you think? What's what's coming up? They've made crazy strides in the last two years. I mean, I they are innovative advanced. when you look at the search side. I mean, I, I'm not sure about the PPC side, but on the search product side, they're, they're I think they're very innovative. You know, yep. they're including or they, like Foursquare, Quora. I don't know what yeah. else. So they're including quite some, you know, good stuff into yeah. the search engine. Yeah, the thing I always say is they seem to focus on user experience and advertiser experience, versus Google seems to focus on money. So I feel like I feel like uh, Bing's coming along with a lot of cool tools. I think they're catching up, both in parity, making it easier to use, and making it more similar to AdWords, but also finding ways that AdWords have always not been as good, and finding what, ways what, to fix What is problems. it like a typical thing where AdWords hasn't always hasn't been good? So the biggest one's service. Um, a lot of our well, our AdWords service is a sales team, right? And they're really trying to push spend, new products, betas, and stuff like that. They're with Bing, like I tend to feel like I ask a problem and someone will actually get in the account and fix it for me. So has it been different once at AdWords or has it always been like that? My experience is it's always been like it's it. It's crazy because you must be spending you know, gazillions yeah. like every day and, and how come Close they're not... Close to gazillions. Cl but like a little bit less, like <laughs> a million less than a gazillion. But that, then again, they're not providing you the service you should have. That's, that's kind of... Yep. You, you wouldn't do that. As a, as a businessman, it's kind of confusing yeah. to act like that, right? It's just tough. That they, I think that what they need is more technical support because the service team from a sales standpoint is really useful. They're really helpful. I really like the people and everything like that. And they don't necessarily have the technical support to actually be helping with the account optimizations or troubleshooting or finding opportunities and stuff like that. So I would say AdWords has probably gotten better at the sell side, 
while Bing is just focused more on service side, which from an advertiser is what I need because sure. I know enough about what's happening in the marketplace. I don't need to necessarily be told what's new or changed and things like that. Yeah. I just sometimes need help implementing it or troubleshooting right. something. Right. So you also lead your PPC team. Hmm? How do you coach them? Do you like check out the accounts that they do and say, oh, this is bad and you could try <laughs> this and yeah. see this? Or, or do, do they mostly you know, coach each other? How do you, how do, you do the internal you know, yeah. learning curve, make sure that works out? So our team's highly collaborative, so it's all of the above. So I sit on the floor with everyone else. How many guys are there? Uh, there's 20 people on the paid search team right. specifically. So I sit on the team with them, and if they have questions, they can come directly to me. I'll do trainings with everyone, and so we'll train Do you on still that. manage accounts on your own, or you're managing no, the managing guys? Accounts. from Just yep. managing. If I manage an account, it's for very short periods of time. It's a brand new account, or it's a something account critical. that really need, yeah, something critical or something like that. So, but, but beyond just me, we have really crazy talented people on our team who all can step in and do you a training. You shouldn't name them, otherwise probably they get hired from Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> that already happened. Google actually poached one of our, oh, our account managers. But then you would have somebody, somebody great in the service team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what we were so hoping So you probably for. should allow it. <laughs> <laughs> we're just, we're training their service team for them. Is how we, no, just joking. And like I said, I don't want to overstate it. They, they do have great salespeople. Just so how much, how long do you hire juniors who never done it before? We, we hire the range, so um, I had 11 years of experience when Hannapin hired me. We've hired people with nine years, six years, five years. But we also hired people young, straight out of school who don't, and just use the rest of the people to train them and coach them, so start how, them how out long do they, How long do they need to be able to manage an account on their own, at least a small one? For a small one, it's usually about six months, uh, maybe a little bit less, depending on how quickly they grasp it, or if they have a background in technical stuff or marketing or something like that. Um, big accounts, we usually have them be support on them, so not necessarily a lead account manager, but maybe helping make changes and stuff like that. Till about the first year, and then and then they might be ready to. So, so do clients lead. understand that you're, you know, people who know what they're doing don't fall from trees, and yeah. you, you know how you have to invest in that. That's. Yeah. Clients figure that it's not a problem to. It's a challenge, and it's also we have a like my, we have an associate per, uh, director of paid search, so okay. the person right below me, who's on every account for the first 90 days. Wow! So we make sure every first impression so it's like a quality happened. assurance. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then we do updates every week on the accounts and everything like that. So. I think clients understand that, yeah, talent doesn't grow on trees. Yeah, you have to develop it. Um, I think we develop it pretty quick, uh, comparatively. But we also have a lot of systems in place to make sure that there's high-level insight going in every account and that we don't just put someone six months of experience on an account and say, good luck, have, have fun, make it good. So, All right. yeah, good. Absolutely. Thanks so much for the interview. And absolutely. The Thank you. OM Report and Andre Alpa would like to thank you for your attention. You can get more episodes on www.omreport.com.